Hello everyone, it's Jack from Visual Effects. Um, so today we're going to be looking at using Octane to make displaced textures and how to get them to look quite realistic. Um, we're going to use one of my favourites which is the Cobbled Stone. So without further ado, let's dive in. Just going to plunk that there. So I'm going to start by setting up an environment. So we'll just go to HDR environment. And we will set up a camera as well. And um, so let's create a plane for our ground. And let's create our material ready. So we're going to go for a universal material. Plunk that on. And let's start playing. This we're gonna so for this example we're gonna need cobbled base color normal height roughness and ambient occlusion. So once we've got that we just need to link all these up. So let's start with this. Plunk it on. Plunk our normal map on as well. We're doing quite severe here, so if we just knock that back, it should look a bit better. Um, then we put our roughness, then we put our roughness map on. And then we will use the displacement one. So to do a displacement, we just need to go to displacement, add displacement, or drag displacement from here. Plunk this on. We should already have something that's looking pretty cool. Right, so sometimes you'll notice that textures come in a bit too shiny, depending on which render engine you're using. Um, but the roughness map's there, but you can tweak it to death because you do. Sometimes you have to do this with Quixel assets as well. So let's just get this displacement looking cool first. So let's just change this to 4K because we're using a 4K texture. Instantly makes it a lot better. And we should probably scale this to something closer to real world as we're in a physical based render so put that to one side and scale this down the scale does really make a difference especially in Octane less so in things like Redshift and other renderers but scale is so important start with one, it's obviously too small, we'll say three, that should be about what it would be in real life. So the roughness map with the scale of the scene tends to work a lot better as well and may need less tweaking but there's still some shiny elements that I probably want to get rid of. So to do this we can just tweak the power just for a slight subtle change if it's just a small tweak or you can connect a color correction node to adjust the contrast as well if you really wanted certain areas to be wet and then invert. The IOR value is pretty important as well for stone textures because again it depends what render engine you're in but look at the shininess on there. That might be all the vibe that you're going for and it might help create a nice mood to a scene but it's probably not too realistic. So by knocking that down to about 1.2 
And the only the other final thing that you can do as well is go for specular and just really knock that back a little. Also knock the metallic down because we chose to use a metallic texture. So we're getting something that's looking a lot more realistic. So if you did want some of that shine back, we can go and play a bit with the specular again, but probably subtly. And if you notice it does look probably a bit more too like clay, we can knock that back up to 1.2 and then we turn the metallic off. Yeah. Knock that one down too. So the um, other thing that you can do is we provide with most of our textures, if not all of them, uh, ambient occlusion map, which if the shadows aren't looking quite right and you just want to get that little bit more detail to make it look as if it fits a bit more realistic, because on exterior scenes there's less GI bouncing around, you can. So you, all, to do that you just pick a multiply node, put your image texture in it and also the ambient occlusion and then drop that on the albedo. So now you can see the crevices have got a lot darker and then then what we can do for further tweaks is just grab the color correction plunk it on the middle and then we can really tweak this so contrast will be the one that makes the most difference depending on the complexity of the ambient occlusion you can also get quite cartoony styles as well which is quite cool so yeah usually you use a multiply to use the ambient occlusion and just by playing with these figures we can tweak it a bit to get a better look that we want. You can also invert for crazy effects which I've not seen many people do but it is quite cool. But yeah we were looking at something like that. Um, normal maps are not always needed but that's down to you as a personal preference. So that's what it looks like with it on. And then this is what it looks like without it. Not much difference. Fake details. So to make this look like a proper render now, we'll just go in, slide it an angle. Crank that light up a bit more. Crank our exposure up at the camera. Pretend we really love floors. We love taking photos of them. Subtle vignetting. And then we'll go for a little bit of depth of field. And that's how to use, um, well, visual effects hot textures and pretty much any photo scan textures um, in Octane, how to use the displacement and not that out the box not every texture is going to fit your scene. Usually it's just the roughness map that you need to play with and sometimes add the ambient occlusion. Um, obviously if you've got a Mars scene and you wanted these to look like cobbled Mars stones then obviously you have to play with the colour as well. Mm -hmm. 